A great way to learn the deep learning concepts like CNN is to implement them by building some kind of image classification application. So how can we build such models using Keras framework? Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, we will start building the CNN model for our clothing classification or prediction app. The Keras library in Python makes it pretty simple to build a CNN model. Hence, we will be using Keras framework with TensorFlow as backend to build our model. We will be using Fashion MNIST dataset and I will be showing you how to download it using Keras and pre-process it in desired shape so that it can be given as input to our CNN model. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. GitHub link for all the required Jupyter notebooks is given in the description section. Please don't forget to like and share this video. So computers see images using pixels, hence there is a need to pre-process this image pixel based data and that is what we are going to see in this video. If you want to know more in detail about pixel and other related concepts, then you can watch this video. So let me open uh, the Google Colab Jupyter Notebook to show you the code related to CNN model. We will move in a step by step manner only. So let's first change the runtime from CPU to GPU so that your deep learning model can be trained in a faster manner. So go to runtime and click on change runtime type here. You can see that I am using Python 3 to build our convolution neural network model. And the hardware accelerator I have chosen is GPU here. And if you click here, you will see other options as well. So there is a none option. So if you choose none, then it means that you are using CPU. And then there is another option called as TPU or tensor processing unit and which is four times powerful than GPU. So we can use this option as well. But in my case, I have chosen the GPU option. So if you click on save, this particular option will be saved. So let's now see the code. So first we are going to import necessary libraries like NumPy and fashion underscore amnist dataset from Keras dot datasets package. This package contains lots of other datasets such as IMDB, Boston housing, amnist of numerical digits, Sifar 10 as well. So you can go to this Keras link to get more details. So here you will see the details about all the data set which you can download using Keras. In the next cell I am loading this fashion underscore amnist data set using load underscore data method and storing the corresponding training and test data sets in the variables like x underscore train y underscore train x underscore test and y underscore test so these variables now contains the corresponding data in the next cell uh, we are just exploring the data set to view number of observations number of labels dimension of a single image in both training and test data set so we are using len method here to calculate both number of observations and number of labels and shape method is being used to calculate the dimension of an image. So I am doing this stuff for both a training data set and test data set. So when I run this cell you can see that number of samples or observations in the training set are 60,000. That means we have 60,000 images in this data, uh, training data set. Number of labels in the training data set is again 60,000. The dimension of uh, a single image in X train is 28 by 28 pixel. Now in the test data set we have 10,000 observations and labels are again 10,000 and the dimension of a single image in X underscore test data set is again 28 by 28 pixel. Next I am importing matplotlib library so that we can visualize the grayscale images available in fashion amnist data set. Next, I am trying to create various subplots for randomly selected images from the data set. So first, we are trying to create subplot parameters having 
two rows, three columns, and index value as one for this particular subplot. What this essentially means is to break the subplot into a two by three grid and place the new subplot on the first cell of this grid. Okay. And in the next line, we are doing a random sampling here, this particular line, from low value of 0 to the length of x underscore train, that is the number of observations or samples we have in x train, in order to pick the random image. In the next line, we are showing the random image, uh, setting the color map to gray. If you can see this parameter, this is the one. So we are setting the color map to gray since our image data set is grayscale in nature. Hence, our model will uh, get trained on grayscale images only. It will find difficulty in recognizing color images. Next, similar subsequent code represents various other subplots to showcase different images. If you want to know more about matplotlib subplots, then you can go through this link. I will provide this link in the description section as well. Okay, so this page gives all the details about subplots. Finally, we are displaying the plots using plt.show method. And when I ran the cell, you can see that it displayed the randomly selected images from the training data set. Since we uh, plotted only five images, so that's why we are seeing only five here. So Let's scroll down. So next we are importing some important libraries or packages to build our CNN model using Keras. First one is uh, np underscore utils library which will be used to convert array of labeled data to one hot encoded vector. More on one hot encoding later on. Next is Keras library which is our high level front end into TensorFlow and other deep learning backends. Then we have each model and layer specific libraries such as sequential, dense, dropout, flatten, conv2d, max pooling 2d, batch normalization, etc. After that, we have another library backend of Keras, which is this one. So what is the need of this library? Well, Keras is a model level library, which provides high level building blocks for developing deep learning models. It cannot handle uh, low-level operations such as convolutions, tensor-based operations like products by itself. Hence, it relies on a specialized, well-optimized tensor manipulation library to do so, serving as the backend engine of Keras. So rather than picking one single tensor library and making the implementation of Keras tied to that library, Keras handles the problem in a modular way and several different backend engines can be plugged seamlessly into Keras. The backend is uh, readily available and we can invoke it from Keras import backend as K. K here is same as TF as if you imported TensorFlow like this import TensorFlow as TF command. So you can use K to perform lower level operations with the backend. Next, we are setting the training parameters like batch size and epochs, etc. So what does this uh, batch size signify? Well, the batch size defines the number of samples that will be propagated through the network. For example, let's say you have 1000 training samples or observations and you want to set up a batch size equal to 100. The algorithm takes the first 100 samples from first to hundredth from the training data set and trains the network. Next, it takes the second hundred samples from hundred first to two hundredth and trains the network again. We can keep doing this procedure until we have propagated all the samples through the network. We are using a batch size of 128 here. Then we have another parameter called as epochs one epoch is when an entire data set is passed forward and backward through the neural network only once. Since one epoch is too big to feed to the computer at once, so we divide it in several smaller batches, hence we use batch size parameter. In the next line, we are storing individual number of rows of an image and individual number of columns of the same image in img underscore rows and img underscore calls variables respectively. 
it is required to reshape the data in desired shape so that Keras can understand it. We are going to see it in the, uh, in the next cell. Keras require input data in the shape as follows which is just a tensor. So it consists of a number of samples, number of rows, number of columns and channel that is data in four dimension format. Number of samples is number of observations in the training set or test set. Number of rows and number of columns we have already calculated above. So number of rows and number of columns uh, are the dimensions of a single image which was 28 by 28 in our case since the dimension of a single image was 28 pixel by 28 pixel. So we are calculating those image rows and image columns here. Now the channel represents whether the image is grayscale or colored. So if our image is grayscale that is black and white then the value of channel would be 1 and if the image is colored then the, Im then the value of uh, channel would be 3. Number 3 represents RGB colors that is red, green, blue. We know that our data has original image shape of 60,000 by 28 by 28 and here we want to change it to shape 60,000 by 28 by 28 by 1. So in order to achieve that we are using reshape function here. The reshape function is used to give a new shape to an array without changing its data. Let me show you the pictorial representation of how reshape works. So if you have an array with two rows and three columns and you want to convert it into this array with three rows and two columns then you can use a reshape function in this way where x is equals to np.array and then in brackets we are passing the corresponding array which is 234 by 567. So x is the input array which you want to convert. So in the next cell we are using reshape function to change the data into desired shape of 60,000 by 28 by 28 by 1 which is required by Keras and which can be fed into the input layer of our neural network. Don't worry about the number 60,000 because that's already factored in as number of samples in these training and test data sets. We also need to define the input shape of a single image which will be uh, given as input to our neural network. That's what we are doing in this particular cell here. So what flows between layers are tensors. Tensors can be seen as matrices with shapes. In Keras the input layer itself is not a layer but a tensor. So it's a starting tensor you, uh, you send to the first hidden layer. This tensor must have the same shape as your training data. So the input shape of our image would be 28 by 28 by 1. If you want to know more about scalar, vector, matrices and tensors then you can uh, watch this video. Link is given in the i button above. So folks I will take a pause here. In the next upcoming video we will continue to see how can we reshape the data in order to be given as input to CNN along with normalizing the data, performing one hot encoding and implementation of few of the layers of the CNN model. So here is today's question. What kind of channel does this input data represents? 10 by 64 by 64 by 3. Please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming videos so keep on watching. Thank you.